Hey everyone, can any one of you please explain to me why people think goats are scary? I mean, come on, goats are awesome! Look at that face, how can you resist not wanting to give that a smooch? I'm just gonna get quickly into the plot here. So we're in New England in the first half of the 17th century, where upon threat of banishment by the church, an English farmer leaves his colonial plantation, relocating his wife and five children to a remote area on the edge of an ominous forest. Strange and unsettling things start happening almost immediately when the family's newborn baby disappears without a trace. It doesn't take long before this extremely puritanical family starts suspecting that there might be some more sinister force or entity at work here, which might be the explanation for their child's disappearance. Because whether there is or isn't an actual paranormal presence here is of less importance than how these characters perceive and react to what they think might be lurking around the forest. It's a very situational thing this movie is doing. This movie might play some tricks on people, depending on their expectations, because most people are probably going to go into this expecting a horror movie, and when they are going to look at what the budget for this movie was, they are going to be expecting a very cheap and very lazy horror movie, probably something along the lines of the paranormal activity films. And judging by the huge discrepancy of the critic score and the audience score this film has on Rotten Tomatoes, those people are going to be massively disappointed, because you see this film has a lot more in common with something like The Shining than it does with Friday the 13th. And I think that is the absolute best compliment I can give it. Because you see folks, this is a real film. This is a film with a real script, a real story, real acting and real cinematography, real emotions, real goats. There isn't a single jump scare in this whole film, and the whole witch thing is more pretext rather than it is context. For you see, what's truly frightening about this film, and what has always frightened me in real life as well, is people. People sometimes ask me if I could have chosen to have lived in another time, like another decade or in another century, what century would have that been? And I always say, man, I would, I would live, I like living right here, in the present, in the moment, it's fine for me. But if I would have to go back and live in another time, I would definitely not choose the Middle Ages. Because this shit was on a whole nother level back then. Because when the shit hits the fan, this family, no matter how close and united they were before, they just start eating each other up like cockroaches. And it's not because they are bad people, quite on the contrary, they are very good people, they are trying to be the best people they can be. But unfortunately for them, what gives them their strength, what keeps them united as a family, which is their faith, also gives birth to their biggest downfall, their superstition. The film does a masterful job at making you feel pity towards these people. For you see, the film doesn't judge these characters, what it merely tries to do is show us and try to make us understand what life must have been like back in those days for a family of devout Christians who are terrified of going against their religion. A huge chunk of this film is actually a family drama, dealing with family relations, tensions between family members, accusations being thrown left and right, and it becomes extra scary because you're watching this family, you're watching these characters you care about disintegrating in front of your eyes, and you're also not really sure of the gravity of this paranormal threat which might be lurking in the background. So you see, the movie works both ways, because what you're seeing is quite unsettling, and also what you're not seeing is quite unsettling as well. It's very clever. Everything about the production of this film is top-notch. A million dollars well spent. Keep in mind that a million dollars is a very little amount of money for a film of this scale. 10 Cloverfield Lane is considered to be a low-budget film, and that film cost 15 million dollars to make. Arguably it had bigger actors in it and some special effects, but still. This film has actors in it as well. Some of them you might know from TV series such as The Office or Game of Thrones, but arguably the biggest surprise is newcomer Anya Taylor-Joy, who absolutely carries this film like a pro. Bright future ahead of this young lady, I'm telling you. There is something about the acting though which I think I kind of noticed, it definitely doesn't ruin the film, but it's the little kids, the little boy and the little girl playing the twins. They are not as good as the rest of the cast unfortunately, and I think they kind of knew that and I think they kind of tried to mask it a little bit, because there are certain scenes scenes, certain frames where the kids really need to have very convincing facial expressions and they are either kept more in the background or there is something other in the frame keeping your attention away from them. It's just something I think I kind of noticed. The last thing I want to mention and praise about the film is its historical accuracy. Because you see, even though it's a fictional story inspired by many folk tales and fairy tales, allegedly much of the dialogue
dialogue of the film was lifted directly from written accounts of historical witchcraft, including journals, diaries, and court records. This really reminded me of last year's historical epic Aferim, set in 19th century Valachia, for which allegedly the filmmakers kind of did the same thing. And I think that's an awesome method. It takes a lot of research, probably a lot of hard work, but it really makes the film feel very authentic. So props for them for doing that. So that was my two cents on this film, folks. Thanks for watching, as always, and I will see you later with other reviews. Goodbye!